In this video, you'll learn how to create these fluid-like particle effects inside a logo, text, or any other object. This builds on my previous tutorial, so if you haven't seen that one yet, make sure you watch it afterwards. You'll be able to combine both techniques for some amazing results. You can also download Blender logo so you can follow along, or if you have your own, you can use that as well. I'll be using Blender 4.5. So in a new Blender scene, to make everyone happy, I'll be deleting the default cube this time. And I'll be using Blender logo, which I downloaded as an SVG. So we can go to File, Import, and Scalable Vector Graphics. First, we can scale the logo if needed, as SVGs are usually imported very small. And I'll place it in the center of the scene. I want to get rid of this black SVG material so we can see better what's happening. Now, because these are curves, we can go right-click and adjust extrusion to give it some thickness. When we are happy, we can turn this into a mesh by pressing Ctrl A and Visual Geometry to Mesh. Now we can go to edit mode and if we select one of these vertices and press L to select connected, we can see that this mesh is separated and it's not manifold. So we can select everything by pressing A and we can press M and select merge by distance. We can also press X and limit the dissolve to clean up the mesh a little bit. The main idea here is that if we have a shape of this logo that we are going to use as a fluid, we want to have the same shape but slightly larger as a container that will hold the fluid in. But the tricky part is that the shape that we are going to use as a collision also needs to have thickness. You can use whatever modeling method that you feel most comfortable to create this, but I will try to keep this as simple as possible. So first I'm going to add a solidify modifier. I'll check even thickness and I'll increase the thickness to 0.05. Don't forget that if you did any scaling to your logo, you need to apply the scale. Now in this case, I'm noticing some issues with Solidify and the reason for that is that I'm having overlapping vertices and we can fix that easily by merging them together. You can also try changing the method from simple to complex and see if you're getting more even results from Solidify modifier. And I'll increase the thickness even more as I'm planning to use the inner mesh as a fluid object. I'm seeing some intersecting here, so I'll fix that as well. I'm happy with this and I'll apply the modifier. Now we can go to edit mode and we can select these outer parts by hovering over one of the vertices and press L to select connected. And we can press P and selection to separate by selection. Now we have these two as a separate objects, smaller part that we can use as a fluid mesh and a larger one that we can use as an obstacle. You can rename these if you want just so it's easier to know which one is which. For now we can hide the collision object. And we can go here and turn on face orientation. As you can see, normals are inverted for this mesh and we can fix that by going to edit mode, selecting everything by pressing A and we can press Shift N. And this is gonna recalculate the normals. We can also lower the height of this mesh as we don't need fluid to be this thick. Something like this. When you're happy, we can go to the object, quick effects and quick liquid. Same like in the last video, I'm gonna go to edit mode and bring up these vertices of the domain as we just need to cover the area where the simulation is going to happen. Now we can bring back the collision mesh. First thing we need to do is to invert the faces so it can hold the fluid inside. We can select everything by pressing A and press Ctrl Shift N and this is going to recalculate the normals. You want to have these outside faces red. Now we can go to physics tab and turn on the fluid and we can select a factor for the type. There's a couple of ways you can go about this. You can manually model this mesh to have outside walls or thickness, or you can add solidify modifier. And lastly, you can use this surface thickness option in the settings of the collider object. And very often you might have to combine both of these to get the results that you want. Honestly, this is going to be your biggest headache as you will encounter fluid leaks through the walls, geometry disappearing, and there is no easy fix for this. You'll just have to play with the settings. Just have in mind that your mesh needs to be solid and you can't have intersecting or overlapping vertices as that will cause issues for sure. In this case, I'll just use this setting for the surface thickness and if needed later, I'll add the solidify modifier as well. I'll turn off the visibility of the collider to see what's happening. And if you press play, we can see that the fluid is being contained, at least. I'll add the turbulence force into the scene so we can see better what's happening with the fluid. I actually just want to see the particles, so I'll turn off the visibility of the emitter in the particle settings. The resolution is too low, so I'll increase it a little bit until I see that everything disappears. And for me, it happened here, and for you, it might not even happen. It all depends on the logo and the size and how well did you set up the collider mesh. This is still quite low resolution, but that's okay because I'm only interested in the velocity that I can extract from this. If I press play now, you can see that some particles are leaking on the side. 
And to fix this, I'll go back to the collider mesh and increase the thickness a little bit more. And if I press play again, you can see it's a little bit better, but not completely resolved. Another thing you can experiment with to fix this is the fractional obstacles into the main settings. We can turn this on and I will put the threshold to 1. And as you can see, this managed to resolve the issue of particles leaking through the walls. Be ready to spend a lot of time tweaking these settings to get what you want if you really want to use the fluid simulation to get this effect. I'm going to adjust some settings in the turbulence and actually I'm just going to increase the flow a little bit. And I'm happy with this. As the resolution is low, we're not getting many particles, so we can increase the sampling. I'll just do three for the performance. We can also increase the narrow band here. I'll also increase the randomization of the particles just so they don't start off as a perfect grid. If you scroll down under the mesh, I'm going to change the uprest to one and particle radius to one, which is not important. But the main thing here is you need to check speed vectors as this is the only way we can get to the velocity later on. If you go further down to caching, here you can select where you want to store the cache. Under that we have the frames that you will be baking and these are the actual frames that will be baked and not the ones that are set in the timeline. Then under that we have the type and now it's set to replay and we can see these particles. But for the final simulation you want to set this to all. Just under that you have the options that you can check off called resumable. And this just means you can actually cancel the bake at any point and you will be able to resume from that point instead of baking from the beginning. Which is useful because you might just want to bake a few frames and check if everything's okay and then you can continue. Here under the volumetric data we have the format set to OpenVDB which is normally used for the smoke simulation so we can set this to Unicache. And now we are ready to press bake all. I'll press escape here just to check if everything's okay and if it is we can press resume. Now that the baking is done, we can turn off the visibility and render for the fluid domain and the rest of the object as we don't need them in the render. We will use the fluid domain later to extract velocity and also collision object when we simulate particle system in the geometry nodes. Like in the last tutorial, we can add a single vertex into the scene and reminder if you don't have this option, you need to turn on the extra objects add-on in the preferences. We can exit the edit mode and we need to add a particle instance modifier. For object, we can select liquid domain and we have the particles as the vertices now. And we need to go to geometry nodes now. I'm going to split this window and I'll change this side to geometry nodes. We can create a new node tree. Now I want to turn these vertices into points so we can use mesh to point node. I'll quickly change the render engine to cycles and device to GPU. And we can go to render preview. As you can see, the points are too big so we can make the radius 0.01 .01. and it looks better now. To be able to have material in these points we need to add the set material node and I'll use the existing material. I'll also set this material to the single vertex so it's easier to access in the shader nodes. We can go to the shader nodes. Actually before we do any shading I want to address issue of motion blur that was mentioned in the comments of my previous tutorials. I'll need to go back to geometry nodes for this. As we need to transfer the velocity from the liquid domain to this mesh. We can drag the liquid domain into this geometry node setup. We can change the position to relative. Now we need to add a sample near a surface node and we need to change from float to vector as we are sampling velocity. We can add the name attribute node and we need to name this velocity. And we can plug this into the value. We can preview this and as you can see we have the velocity of the particles from the fluid domain. Now we can add the store name attribute node and change this to vector. And before we connect this, let's set up the camera so we can render this without to see the difference. We can turn on the motion blur here and if we render now, we can see that there is no motion blur at all. If we open up the spreadsheet, we can see that the only attributes that these points have are position and radius and Blender needs velocity to be able to render motion blur. So now if we name this attribute that we are storing velocity, and we connect this into the value, we can try rendering again and you will see that there is motion blur. Now you might need to increase the shutter to see this better. But to be honest, there is a lot of issues that might happen with rendering particles and instances with motion blur. There is a great video from Bradley Animation on this topic where he talks about some of the issues that you might get and possible solutions. So I encourage you to check that out. Also, one of the questions in my last video was about making particles look like they are sparkling or glitter. So I'll just quickly do a simple setup for that. We can add the instance on point node. I'll use the radius for the scale and we can instance simple cube. 
I'll add a little bit of randomness to the rotation by using random value node. Now we can go to the shader editor. I'll change the color to red and we can lower the roughness and we can already see some sparkling even with the low light strength. Now we can enhance this by using Voronoi texture, but first I'll add the geometry node and I'm gonna plug the position to the Voronoi texture. We can increase the scale to a large number and if we preview this through the color output, we can see nice texture on each cube that we can use as a normal map. Now we can connect this to the normal map node and we connect this to the normal socket of the principal BSDF and I'll set the strength to either one or two. You can't see very much here, but if we go to the compositor tab, we can click here, use nodes and we actually need to render a frame first. Oh, you might see the issues with the motion blur instances. I'll turn off the motion blur and render again. Now we can first add a glare node set to bloom and we can duplicate this and change to streaks. Under the highlights here, you might need to lower the threshold depending on the strength of your light. I'll leave this on 0.3. We can change the angle here to 45 and I'll increase the color modulation a little bit. I'll also increase my light strength just to see this a little bit better. Now, if you go back to layout and we can set up the composite to be visible in the viewport, we can see nice sparkling effect. We can also enhance this by storing random value as an attribute, or you can use a point info node as well in the shader editor, but that won't work if you're using instances. So in the geometry node, we can add another store name attribute node, and you want to place this before the instances, or if you're using instances, you need to change from point to instances, which would actually be better and more stable than what I'm doing here. So if you are instancing cubes, instead of rendering points, that would be a much better option and more stable. We're going to name this random and you need to plug random value node here. Now, if you go back to the shader node, we can add the attribute node and we need to use the random and change the instancer. We can normalize this a little bit by using multiply math node. And I'm going to plug this into the vector mod length node. The reason why is because I'm going to use another attribute node and I'll use velocity and we can combine these two with the vector mat add node. And to crunch these values a little bit, we can use a color ramp node and plug this into the strength of the emission socket. And now we have these points that are glistening, which is another interesting look. And you can change the color to the color of the particles. And you can also add another multiply node to control the strength of the bright particles. I hope this helped to get the look that you want. I'll delete this as I want to talk about the problems with rendering instances with this setup. If I zoom in, and I'm not sure if you actually see this, but you might notice when you are using random rotation, you can see some erratic or jittery rotation that fluid simulation is producing, which makes the final render not very smooth like you see the ones from Cinema 4D. So my workaround for this is to use a particle solver in geometry nodes. Now we're not going to build one from scratch as there are a few out there already. Some paid ones, some free. Two good ones that I can recommend are this simple solution from Thomas Albus and probably the best one out there from Cartesian Caramel and both of these are free. I will leave the links in the description. We can delete this and move this to the side to make some space. I'll actually use Cartesian Caramel one. I'll add this particle simulation node and we can delete this as we won't be using unless you are storing it for shading. But in that case, you will need to change the name from velocity to something else. We can plug in these points into the new particles and make sure that include and only on start is checked. If you play now, we don't see anything happening. That's because we didn't set the velocity for the particles. We need to plug that under the movement here. First, I need to scale the velocity by 0.05, which is close to delta time. That's because I'm using 24 frames. So if your animation is set to 30 or 60 frames, you will have to divide one by the frame rate to get the number that you need. Now I'm going to plug in the velocity and if you press play, we can see that it works, but it's going everywhere. So we need to add the collision object. Luckily, we already have one, so we can drag the collision mesh that we made earlier. We can set the position to relative and we can expand the collision here and activate it and we can plug this into the collider. And if you play now, we can see that the particles are contained inside the mesh, but it's still not looking great. To fix that, we need to uncheck offset under the velocity here. And if you play now, we can see the movement that is similar to what we had when we did the fluid simulation. But we can make this better. We can also activate the self collision and it seems like this made it worse, but that's because our radius here under the particle system is too big. First, I'll add the relax point node before the simulation just to start them off not intersecting. 
and we can set the radius here to 0 0.01. And if you press play now, we finally have something that looks good. Here, if we turn on the instances, we can see that the rotation is much more stable and it looks smooth. Now you could actually use the rotation from the velocity and it will look good. Don't forget to increase the lifetime to 250 as well. And you can also combine this velocity with other noises to get the different effects. And that's it for this video. Don't forget to check out my previous tutorial as this one is basically continuation of that. I hope this was useful and that you learned something new and I'll see you in the next video.